Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In today's video, we are going to configure DDNS client. And OpenWRT DDNS client supports a wide range of uh, dynamic domain name service provider from Namecheap.com to Google.com to Cloudflare and the famous NoIP.com. For this tutorial, we will be using no IP at assemble and then we will try with namechief.com because they have some very cheap domain promotion. So it is just one or two US dollars and I think it is good to give a try. All right. So first of all, let's back to the routers and we are using the Habanero development kit from a Levi. This is a very powerful routers and I already have a tutorial about that. So let's go to system and shopware, update the list and wait for the package database being updated. Perfect, it is finished and now let's install the first package which is DDNS Swift. Dynamic DNS client Swift with IPv6 support. This is the good one and let's install it. Click install to start the process. And then we need to install DDNS Lucy app in order to configure the application via Lucy. All right, Lucy app has been successfully installed and you can see Lucy app DDNS. So right here, we have some of the script for the DDNS and we have Cloudflare, so free DNS, go.d.com, script no IP and script NS update and script root 35. So for these exceptions service provider, you need to manually install their script in order to use it, right? So we are going to install this one as well, which is no IP.com. Once we done, log out from Lucy and log back in. And right here under the service tab, you should see dynamic DNS. Click on that and we will see to assemble. All right, so click the edit button. On the basic settings, we have some of the main information that we need to declare such as uh, the status enable or disable and the host name and the IP address version is it IPv4 or IPv6 and the DDNS service providers and as I mentioned in the beginning we have a bunch of providers supported right here the domain name the username and the password after you have successfully created an account on noip.com let's go to the quick add and create a host name so I will be using Vantage Corner. So I will be using Vantage Corner dot dot net and click add hostname. So manage it now. And right now the IPv4 address has been detected at my one public IP and I don't want it, I want it to be 1.1.1.1 so click update the host name because we want to see if the change happened later on, right? So by rights, after you register, you will have the username which is this one, vantc 123 and your password so the username can be either your email or your username, right? This is the URL to update the IP address for the dynamic domain name. So for example, as you can see right here, this is the HTTP ad slash username and then your password. And then this is the domain to update this and we don't need to change. And then the host name, we need to change our host name and the IP address in which we want to update. For example, let me change it. This is, um, this is my username, VanTC. One, two, three, and the passwords. It is VanTC test. So VanTC test, 
and then the host name it is when touch corner and then the my IP will be 9.9.9.9 so right here it is 1.1.1.1 and let's verify that first so ping man touch corner dot gdnet and we can see that the domain is point to 1.1.1.1 so let's copy this one and then open google chrome and then enter it and we will see a response good 9.9.9.9 .9 and the IP address should be updated right here let's try to refresh the page perfect as we can see the IP address has been changed to 9.9.9.9 .9 so this is how it is going to work all right now let's back to open the RT and then look up host name this is the host name that we're going to use so it will be when touch corner net and then it will be ipv4 of course so enable this first and go back to the dns service provider we need to select no ip dot com click change provider and then the username I'm sorry and then the domain which will be this one well we need to declare from the beginning so then touch corner dot dot net enable it the domain and the username it will be when tc123 and then when test which is the passwords and then that's it and let's go back to the advanced setting we have some of the ipv4 sources from where from the network from the url from the interface from the swift so this is very important section so if your router the openwrt router is behind the main router behind that then the ipv4 of the one interface may not be the public ip address that's why if your device is behind a router that you need to select this one at a URL. However, in this case, this is the main router and it is directly connected to the internet. So we can select this one at network, right? And the rest, we can leave it at default. For the time of setting, you can change the interval for how long the packet is going to check for an IP update and send it to the server. And right here, we can see it is 10 minutes, which is 300 seconds and it says that below five minutes is not supported right so maybe we can put a six minute and that's it it's safe and apply and let's see if any good thing happened go back to the basic setting go back to the overview and yep the packet detects that the current IP address is 9.9.9.9 .9 and the last update is never so we need to stop I'm sorry we need to start it first so it is started and we can go and check the log so log file viewer click the read and you can see from the log there are some check going on in the background and you see that the new IP address has been detected so this is the correct public IP address and the packet is sending the update to the no IP server and the result successful good so let's go to this one and refresh the page and yep the IP address has been changed to the public IP address so let's verify that perfect so we have successfully configured DDNS for OpenWRT with no IP. And now let's try with namechip.com. All right. So we are right here at the overview section and we are going to add a new one. So it will be namechip. 
Before we proceed with OpenWRT configuration, let me show you how to update the IP address for a domain and a subdomain on Namecheap, and then we can move on. All right, so this is the dashboard of namecheap.com and right here on the dashboard main page, you should be able to see the list of your domain. And if you don't see it, you can go to the domain list and click on that. So right here, we are going to manage the domain.pw. So let's click on the manage button. And before we proceed, make sure that you are currently using the Namecheap dynamic domain system. If you're using any different name server, then this will not work, all right? Right here, we can see the name chief basic DNS, which is good. And let's go to the advanced DNS. So right here, we have a bunch of records and the templates, so we can just ignore that. But just go to the last section of the page, which is the dynamic DNS. And the status is enabled. If it is still disabled, you can turn it on. And the Dynamics DNS password, this can be treated a password. And if people have this password, they can manually update the IP address of your domain or your subdomain, which is not good at all. So make sure if you are sharing the password like this in the video or on a screenshot, you need to refresh the button to get a new password. Right here, we have some of the records. This is the A which is the root domain. And in this case, uh, our root domain, domain.pw, it point to 1.1.1.1. Let's check it, right? And you can see this is add, which is the root domain and it is pointing to 1.1.1.1. Let's add another subdomain and make it 1.1.1.1. Click save change and Right here, the test domain is pointing to 1.1.1.1. So let's verify that. Good, it is pointing to 1.1.1.1. And let's back to the tutorial. So this is our dynamic DNS password. Just copy that. And let me show you, this is our file. So this is the URL to update the IP address of the domain. So it will be HTTPS, dynamic uh, DNS, pack your domain, right? So update the host. As you can see, this is add, which is the root domain and the domain name we need to replace right here. And next, we have the password, which is this section. And lastly, the IP. So for example, we want to update the root domain. So it will be add and the domain name is will be domain.pw. So let's change it. pw, domain.pw, and then the password. This is our password. And let's see if it is correct or not. So the password paste in. Hmm. And the IP 9.9.9.9, .9 which is the one that you want to update. So let's go and see. Open a new tab. Hit enter. And let's see. Send hot and then two, which is success. Right? So let's see if the IP had been updated on the DNS section. Refresh that. As we expected, the IP has been changed to 9.9.9.9. .9 so let's back to our OpenWRT configuration page and do that. The group host name, it will be John Van. No, before we proceed, we need to change the service provider first. So let's select namecheap.com, chain provider. And then John Van.pw, so the namecheap. Domain name will be domain.pw as well. For the username, it will be at. All right. For the passwords, it will be the dynamic password that we have from here. So copy, make sure we copy it correctly. Paste in. 
and then go to advanced settings and then network or url it will be good to go so basically that's all and click save and apply and we haven't enabled it so like click on that and save the change one more time so back to overview section and let's see it detects that the IP address is currently 1.1.1.1 .1 so click the start button and see and let's go and check the log read the log file perfect so it detects the local IP address is a different one so it has sent an update to Namchief and the result is successful alright so let's back to this page and refresh And we can see that the dynamic DNS record has been changed to 171.249.233.35, which is the public IP address, which is the, the dynamic IP address that I currently have with my network provider. Do you remember that we have this test.jongwen.pw? So let's try ping test.jongwen.pw and it is pointing to 1.1.1.1. So how do we update it? All right, so it's very simple. We can just go to the Lucy page and then go to the basic settings. And right here for the domain name, it is still domain.pw, but the username is will be test. All right, so test.domain.pw, so the username will be test. And then the lookup hot name we can leave it at jongwen.pw or test.jongwen.pw. Click save and apply. And back to the overview section, so we should manually restart the process. Stop it and start. Alright, let's check the log one more time and I believe that it should be good to go. Let's see the queries. And the host is test and the domain is domain.pw. Let's check from the page first. Test.domain.pw has been updated to the new IP address. And let's try. Alright, we need to uh, flush the DNS cache. Thing. Um, I believe that the DNS cache is still not clean yet and we may take some minutes to clean it so yep let it for now we have just successfully configured the dynamic DNS on OpenWRTs and I hope that this tutorial can be useful for you so you can combine this tutorial with OpenWRT port forward then in order to remotely enable the edit hash set to your routers or you can use it to combine with OpenVPN or why got a VPN server and client which we all have the tutorial available on the channel so if the video is good please like share and subscribe to support the channels if there anything need to be improved or any information in the video that is not accurate please have to correct it Thanks for watching and I will be see you in the next video. Bye bye.